Hi, this is Phil Van Allen, and this is a NetLab Toolkit tutorial on HubFeed. HubFeed is a feature of the toolkit that allows you to send signals from one device to another. For example, you can see here, um, this is a video a flash uh, project running on a computer, and over here, this is an iPad. Um, uh, which is using an application built in the NetLab Toolkit. Now you can see that as I drag um, this circle across the screen that th I'm scrubbing through the video that's on the computer. So we have uh, control of one device over another device. And I can uh, reveal the widget. So here's the, the uh, normal widgets that you would see in the NetLab Toolkit project. So you can see that the two projects are connected together and um, working as one. Now let me show you a different demo because it can go the other direction. So that now we have the video on the iPad and here we have the controls on the computer and then as I drag the controls around on the computer I'm scrubbing through the same idea the video on the iPad and then as I move this other one, you can have more than one signal transmitted between uh, devices. So here I'm using uh, scale to um, play with the the uh, hub feed, and here uh, again I'm scrubbing through the video. Any delays you see, by the way, on the iPad are just an artifact of um, of the video capture software we're using here. Okay, so um, let's see uh, how we can build one of these. So I'm going to start with a blank document and um, we'll first create the mobile uh, application and then we'll create the application that runs on the computer. So I've got a, a couple graphics here already created. Um, this is the ball in line that you saw earlier. Um, the ball, of course, is used to control the video, and the line is used to constrain the movement of the ball. So let's set up that um, situation where the ball is touchable and usable. So we can go to our components and bring in a clip control widget. And uh, normally the clip control widget um, controls a graphic on the screen um, through some input feed that it's getting. But in this case, we're going to use clip, clip control um, to turn the object into a touchable object. All right. So um, we're going to need to name the circle, and we will call that ball. And we're going to need to name the line, and we will call that line. And then in clip control, we're going to say the clip we're controlling is ball. And then this touch constraint is special specific for the touch setting and we'll put line in there so that'll help constrain um, the device, the, the uh, ball that we're using. So I'll just put that on the line and then so um, as the user moves it back and forth um, its X position will change. Now we need to be able to listen to that X position so we're going to use this other widget called clip property. It's capable of listening to any property of an object, the X position, the Y position, rotation, and so on. So we just need to tell it which clip to listen to. So over here, we'll set again, set that to ball, oops, set that to ball. And then the last thing we need to do is to take the output of the clip control widget and send it out to hub feed. So for that we'll use analog out. Drag that on the stage and we'll set the controller to hub feed and then when you're using hub feed you name the feed you're creating so uh, in this case we're going to use the default of feed zero but if you had multiple feeds you would need to name each one of them differently okay so we need to name the clip property uh, widget we'll call that touch and we'll tell the analog out to listen to that touch widget as touch widget as its input source. So we'll call that touch. Okay, great. Um, and if we wanted to, we could test this on the computer before we move it to the mobile device. And here we have it. Now, um, it's built as an iOS app, so I can't um, change the I can't uh, drag it but if I if I set sorry if I set this to 
Flash Player. Oh, so I have to set here, I have to set this to touch, and now I can drag it back and forth. And you can see that um, um, its exposition is reflected here in the clip property and then fed uh, to the analog out, and then the analog out sends it by hub feed out. Okay, great. So the last thing we need to do to turn this into a mobile application is again set the player type to iOS, Air for iOS, and then we need to add the mobile control widget, which is here. Um, for more information on creating applications for mobile, mobile devices, there's a separate t tutorial for that. Note also that the mobile control widget has to be named mobile control. Okay, so uh, in mobile control, uh, I'm going to set the default IP address because I know my computer is uh, this address, 10.0.1.9. And I'm also going to use the auto connect feature of mobile control, which will allow me to, as soon as it opens on the mobile device, it'll go ahead and do all the connections automatically. Okay, great. So now we have that, we have to go ahead and build it. So we go into Air for iOS settings. And we want to be sure to set all of these. We're going to use landscape. We're going to use the GPU and our target device is the iPad. Over here in deployment, you'll need to set up your certificate and provisioning profile and your password. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish. Okay, so it's finished uh, publishing. And we'll now move it over to the device. We'll go pull up Xcode and uh, find our file which is um, this one here. So we just have to select applications on the device and then drag HubFeed Demo over there. Okay, once this goes green, we know it's totally transferred. All right, so let's go ahead and create the uh, receiving application that runs on the computer. So the first thing to receive a HubFeed is we'll use the analog in. So we use the analog in and its controller would then be set to HubFeed and we would need to set the hub feed name, which we're using the default feed zero, but if you, again, if you had multiple feeds, you would uh, maybe use a different name. Okay, and now we're gonna control video with this, so we're gonna bring out the video control widget. And um, uh, here, we're going to um, listen to input zero, so we need to name our analog in, input zero. And then what do we want to do with the video? Um, uh, by default, it plays and pauses the video, but we want to set it to control the time so that we scrub through the video, okay? And then we're going to use a, a video already here. So um, we're going to use ball, and that should set that up um, all we need. Now it's looking for a video object name here, and we need to put that on the stage. So let me go to the library here. And we're going to go to this menu here and say new video. So we're basically creating a video object. We'll just use the default name. And then that's now in the library and we simply drag that onto the stage and we can resize that to suit. Okay, and we need to give that a name of video one. And uh, that should do it here so we can uh, quickly test this. So I can just manually test and see and indeed as I uh, move the analog in back and forth that scrubs through the video. Okay so now let's bring up the uh, application on the iPad. Okay so now I'll launch that and it's connected and so now you can see as I move this back and forth on the iPad, I'm scrubbing through the video on the computer. Okay, so let's make it a little more complicated. Let's do uh, one more app with two hub feeds. Okay, so um, we're back to our mobile app and um, we're gonna add in and analog in. And we're going to set this uh, to listen to the accelerometer of the device. And then we'll use analog out again to feed that out um, to the computer. So we'll use another analog out. 
fix that up here. And we'll need to name this input one, let's say, and the analog out will um, make it listen to input one. And um, we'll change this to hub feed again. And then we're going to change the name of the hub feed here to feed one. So that way we have this analog out sends to feed zero and this analog out sends to feed one as you can see here. Okay, so we've got this named input one, this one named uh, doesn't need to be named but it's listening to that input one and that should do it. Okay, we'll save that and publish. Okay, that's finished publishing. And let's go ahead and move it over to the, the device. Okay, back to Flash. And let's set up the computer side of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up another analog in. Make a little room here. And um, this analog in um, will also, again, be listening to hub feed, but we'll set the feed that it listens to to one. Okay, and then um, we'll also uh, use a clip control widget. We'll put that up here, and it's gonna control the scale of this video. So um, we'll name this analog in input one. So the clip control can listen to that. Input one. And the clip it's going to control is video one. Okay. And um, that should do it. Let me test this. And we're going to change this to scale. So now I move this back and forth, it's set to scale, and this we can test and go through by scrubbing the video. Okay, so now we'll bring up the app on the iPad. We'll start that up. Okay, and now you can see as I um, tilt the iPad, the scale of the video is changing based on my tilt. In addition, I can move the, the uh, ball back and forth and scrub through the video. Now I can also um, have multiple devices listening to this. So for example, I can run um, my iPhone also on here. So you can see it. Just hide the widgets. And so now the iPhone is listening to the iPad and it's also scaling as the iPad is uh, moving its accelerometer. So again, you can have multiple devices um, communicating together with the NetLab Toolkit and the hub feed feature. All right, thanks for listening.